I am so happy that we can be here to talk today because you have been studying these ideas since they were very unpopular and unfashionable within the larger world of you know, thinking about work. And that allows such context, such deep layers of understanding. And I don't think that everyone necessarily is bringing that to these conversations. So you started thinking about or adding questions about working from home back in 2004. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. It seems a very long time ago, but yes, almost 20 years ago, uh, I was looking into this. And back then it was like a, a weird side topic. And then suddenly in March 2020, it just exploded. Yeah, I remember looking at the data of working from home and most of the people, you know, from the the national surveys, the people who are working from home, it was largely farmers, right? And that's not something that we can usually think of as like working from home, but it absolutely is. And so my question is, how would you characterize the way that people thought about working from home generally when you first started asking these questions? Well, pre-pandemic, so there's maybe two eras. So let's think going back to when I first started in 2004. Back then, it was pretty rare. And to be honest, it wasn't clear it worked that well, because back in 2004, you know, we didn't have this video calls. We didn't have file sharing, Dropbox. Uh, we didn't have Slack. It was actually pretty hard. It was a lot of telephone calling, uh, you know, emailing files. If you go back before that, it was actually, I remember interviewing someone at work from home in the 80s, and they said their boss would come to their door and drop piles of paper and they'd send them back. The the more recent era, if you go from about 2014, 2015 onwards, work from home from then until now has certainly been way easier. So we have, you know, Zoom came out in, I think, 2013. We've had Dropbox, Slack, everything for the last five, six years. So it could have worked great. 2015, 2016, we didn't need a pandemic to kick us off, but it turns out, you know, we were slow to adopt what was in some senses a great idea staring us in the face. So that's slow adoption. And I think there was like, there's kind of a derision previously to, you know, it's only for a certain type of worker or a certain style of worker. What was fueling that? Like, why was there such a reticence to adopt? You know, it strikes me there's just great ideas out there. (laughs) <laughs> that people just don't adopt. Uh, I've probably spoken to three, four, five hundred managers, execs since the pandemic began, at least, I'd say, in terms of working from home. And maybe about a quarter of them say, like, why didn't we do this earlier? And I don't know. Some firms were, for example, Twitter was getting pretty advanced about moving, working from home uh, mainstream. But mo- and there were some companies that were entirely work from home. Think of Upwork, Automatic. Uh, Artemis connection, but Mm. generally it just wasn't adopted. I think it was frankly a mistake. Uh, I think people thought it didn't work and they didn't ever try it out and they were forced to try it out en masse in March 2020. I don't want to claim it's perfect. And actually post-pandemic, I think most people will be hybrid. So they'd be like in the office three days a week and at home two days a week. But those two days a week we could have been doing before the pandemic and we just weren't. I mean, I I absolutely agree with you. And it strikes me that it's also the hardest way to move forward in some ways, right? Like figuring out what hybrid is going to look like and how we can make it more equitable. But at the same time, it seems what it's like the happy medium between what workers really seem to want and what employers and leaders will allow. But I also think that some of that reticence before the pandemic, you're seeing the same strain in the pushback now. And some of the people who are like, oh, well, we don't want to allow work from home on Mondays and Fridays because we don't trust our workers or from people who, you know, there are these companies that are still like, we want everyone to come back into the office five days a week. So is it similar? Is it the same sort of distress that really um, kept people from adopting this before? Or do you think it's a different sort of strain? I, I think we've been through quite an amazing journey now since March 2020. So I remember the first big company to really say, look, post-pandemic, this stuff is going to stick around. We're going to be hybrid was Facebook in May 2020. Mark Zuckerberg stood up and made a statement. Roll it forwards about a year, and we get to spring, summer 2021. About a year into the pandemic, most companies by this point were saying, look, hybrid is pretty clearly here to stay. We're never going back to where we were. There are a couple of exceptions uh, that I'll call out. So Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, both said back in spring of 2021, 
you know, we're bankers. There's a lot of chest beating around this. You're going to come back into the office five days a week. That's how we do business. No exceptions. By now, a year later, they've just gone quiet. And, you know, folks I know that have informally I've talked to in these companies have said, look, I've gone to my boss and said, I'm going to quit unless, you know, I go join Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley or most of the other competitors that allow it, unless you let me work from home and their bosses have conceded. So where we are now in 2022 is two things have changed. One is it's very clear that work from home, at least hybrid, say two, three days a week, is keeps employees happy and probably improves productivity. And B, we're in like a red hot labor market. So it's just not possible. If you're an employer, if you force, you know, from our survey data, we see this. We've surveyed tens of thousands of Americans and 40% of them say they were forced back to the office five days a week. They would actively look for another job or quit. And I don't know any firm that can, you know, lose 40% of his employees. So market forces and technology have forced pretty much every firm I talk to now to accept it's here to stay. So what else are you seeing in that data? I saw, I think, a little preview of some of it that showed some of the desires of, of how many days people would optimally like to be in the office. And it seemed really clear that hybrid was the overwhelming favorite. What else are you seeing? Yeah, so on the desires, you know, this is what I would call a, ma- a bit of a manager's nightmare. So <laughs> normally when I run surveys or collect data, you see distributions, what I call bell, bell curve shape. So, you know, if you ask people, I don't know what temperature they like their food served. Most people will be somewhere in the middle. Some people like it really hot. Some like it really cold. Working from home is what's called a dumbbell-shaped distribution. All the mass is at either end, which makes life hard. So around a quarter of people ne- never want to work from home ever again after the pandemic. They hate it. They say it's like depressing and isolating. Another quarter have exactly the reverse. They want to permanently work from home. And the rest is this thin, skinny bit in the middle between one, two, three, four days a week. So you're exactly right that the average is in the middle, and that's where I suggest most people go. But it does mean if you're a manager, you're going to have a lot of people on either ends that are going to come to you and say, you know, I'm really unhappy being fully remote, or I'm, re- I'm really unhappy. I want to be fully in person. My advice is just go for the center, three, two hybrid, and tell people, look, you know, we're going to try it out for six months when we return to the end of the year, but then collect a lot of data. We're going to assess it and make a decision. So, uh, that's one thing is I've been astounded how varied people are. The other thing is on average, how much people like it. So in our data, we're seeing the average employee says they value the ability to work from home hybrid as the same as about an 8% pay increase, which is like massive. I mean, that's in a very hot labor market. If you can give something to employees that probably increases productivity and they value as an 8% pay increase, it seems a no-brainer to do this. What's at stake if these companies... You know, they're like, okay, so fine, we'll we'll hire new people. That's fine. We're we're okay with the attrition. But I think that there are particular demographics of people who want to work from home more than others. And so it seems to me that if you're a company that says we are firm in the office five days a week, you're also in a lot of ways saying we are okay with having the, you know, with not addressing equity issues in our in our organization. You're you're completely right. So you know, the one-two punch to getting people back five days a week. And the punch one we just discussed is a lot of people don't like it. You're going to see maybe 40% of people quitting. Punch two was, if you look in the data, and I, I mean, there's lots of surveys, ours and others, people, you see who wants to work from home, is, as you say, is not random. So it turns out everybody works from, wants to work from home, but there's a higher preference amongst Black, Hispanic, and Asian respondents than white. There's a slightly higher preference amongst women than men. There's a significantly higher preference amongst people with young children, amongst people living far from the office, amongst disabled people. So the issue is exactly the second bunch is if you say, look, you've got to come back to the office five days a week, you face major diversity issues, real real challenges with losing some of the employees you really want to keep around. And those two uh, collectively have just killed I, mean, I honestly do not speak to any firms now, and I'm speaking to, you know, dozens each week that are trying to get people back to the office full time, Not certainly not managers and professionals. So to be clear, there's frontline workers that don't really have a choice. Like if you're working in Chipotle or, you know, McDee's or you're in a frontline service work, you have to come in. But for managers and professionals who work on computers and can do, I just don't speak to anyone anymore that's trying to get them back full time because of this, this, these two punches of quit rates and diversity. Anecdotally, I hear from a lot of 
more senior leadership who want to be in the office because it really seems like this is the way that they do their job is by talking with people, right? The the classic like management is walking around understanding. Do you see that divide too in the in the data in terms of people who like, is it more higher level management that wants to be back in the office more and other workers don't care as much? Partly, yes. So again, great point, which is why, you know, often for CEOs, it makes or you know, CHR, CFOs, it does make a lot of sense to make decisions based on your own views or maybe, you know, talk to the rest of the C-suite. In this case, it turns out the demographic factors play a big role, as we just mm. discussed, and how much you want to work from home. And if you look at who generally runs companies, that kind of demographic, you know, they don't have young kids. They have relatively easier commutes. They, you know, you can, you can imagine these folks tend to have a lower preference to work from home. So mm. my strong advice is for leadership is, you know, go to 3-2 hybrid for now but then very explicitly survey your employees later in 2022 to find out what they want and use that to A, make decisions and B, just as importantly, defend your decisions. Because the other issue, coming back to the variety of preferences, whatever you do, you're going to have people saying, I really want five days a week in the office. I really want five days a week at home. And it's much easier to say, look, we surveyed the entire firm. We spoke to, you know, we, we surveyed all 271 people. This is what they want, and this is where we're going with it. And it gives you, A, a correct decision, but B, the ability to support and defend them. Yeah, some of the <laughs> some of the, the most uh, toxic environments or most unsettled environments that I've encountered people telling me about, about in this moment trying to figure out the back to the office plan are organizations where they did all of this surveying and they got all of this data, and then they didn't follow it. Right. They still did what the, what the leader wanted to do. Um, and I think that that's such a great way <laughs> to really uh, turn your turn your workforce against you is to <laughs> figure out what they want and then not listen to it at all. Why would you collect that data in the first? I mean, you know where you're heading. You know, you're heading for trouble. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So because you've been looking at these trends for the last 20 years, I'm going to ask you a very difficult question, which is where are we going to be in 10 years? Oh, 10. You know, if you ask me where we're going to be in one year or two years, I can tell, I'll give you my best guess. So one or two years, I can pretty safely say hybrid. So just yeah. to be clear, rough, I, I give you some kind of rough numbers. Roughly half of Americans cannot work from home. So that's unfortunate. But these are frontline workers. You know, it'd be nice to do something about that in the long run. But right now they can't. Of the other half, roughly, it looks like 35 percent will be hybrid. Probably most people listening, it's managers, professionals, people at the university degree. And then there's a remaining 15% that are going to be fully remote. They're kind of more unusual positions. They tend to be a lot of HR support, payroll, some mm -hmm. journalists, some professionals, but you know, they tend to be people not managing teams. So that's where we're going to be in the next year or two. Ten years from now, I think work from home is going to continue to develop. And the reason is. As technology gets better, it's easier to make this a success. You know, yeah. kind of we've already talked about this going back to 2004. Ten years from now, I'm guessing, you know, there are two things that I often hear in the short run, at least. One is if you're having video calls, it's way better. There's multiple cameras. So mm -hmm. imagine there's a room of eight people. Often, if you're the person remotely, the person you're talking to is like this, they're turning sideways. Multiple mm -hmm. cameras of AI means everyone's always looking at the camera. Longer run, I think, virtual reality, better connectivity, Starlink. There's all kinds of technologies that are going to improve. And I see work from home has taken an enormous jump over the pandemic. It's roughly going to increase fivefold from pre to post. It's then going to slowly rise and grow as we go forward. So if you're a company, this is relevant if you're thinking of, say, office space. So if you're thinking of a new office, you know, 10 years out, I would definitely predict work from home continues to build. Right. Well, and I think the other thing, too, to remember is that whatever you felt about the last two years and working from home, that's not what working from home is going to be like moving forward. Like you're not going to be stuck in our houses, terrified of a virus under duress without child care options. Right. Like yeah. and, and I think anyone who has worked from home and like as academics, we worked from home in various capacities at, at different points and you know, you you can go places. You can go to a coffee shop. You can go to a co-working space. You can work with your friends. Like, it's it's much more varied and textured than I think that we have come to understand as like the kitchen table lonely. So I'm hopeful too. 
Um, this has been such a pleasure. I'm so grateful that we've been able to talk today. Okay, and thanks very much. It's been fantastic catching up.